in possession, they looked lacklustre. It wasn't a Ross County performance uh, and I think Jim will be disappointed with it. Okay. Well, earlier we saw Celtic beat Aberdeen. Next up for the champions, the clash with Rangers on September the 10th. Mark Warburton's side began the weekend top of the table. They kicked things off on Friday night. A way to Kilmarnock team with yet more new faces in the ranks. Commentary comes from John Barnes. Lee Clark's made six changes to his Kilmarnock side from last week. Miles Addison's injured, so Jonathan Byrne returns to central defence. Dicker, Hawkshaw, Taylor, Kilty and Frizzell also come in. Joe Dodu comes in to take the place of Andy Halliday, who's on the Rangers bench. Danny Wilson was injured in the warm-up, so Clint Hill has been given a late call-up to the Rangers starting lineup. Here's Barton. Finding Lee Wallace in behind the full back. Trying to lob that one in. Jamie McDonald took that one cleanly. It was a collision there as uh, Will Boyle was trying to track the run of Dodu. Rangers fans get the first chance to see Joe Garner. A new signing on the bench. Hawkshaw swings in the free kick. Well, that was driven in by Frizzell and it looked to come off the arm of Clint Hill. Killier claiming for the penalty. Kevin Clancy has ignored the appeals. Kilty. Chipping it in, looking for Boyd. Away by Kiernan. Here's Gary Dicker. An impressive start by the home team. The midfielder going close there. But this was the incident that Dordu seemed to injure himself as he fell. And he's going to take no further part in the game. And that means that the new signing, Garner, will come in to take the applause of the Rangers supporters. Taylor has Boyd. Well, Chris Boyd, usually so lethal from that distance. He just didn't get a proper connection there to turn it beyond Fodringham. Forrester with the corner, and goes Garner. Now well, he's been held there as he tried to swing that effort in by Hendry. Barton was also grounded by Gary Dicker. It looked like a bit of wrestling in the penalty spot. Mackay trying to thread it through. Good interception though by Byrne. This is Kilty. Through for Chris Boyd. And Kilmarnock are in front. And it's a former Rangers striker delivering for his present club. We've seen him do this all so often onside. And he drilled it beyond Fodringham. Excellent finish. And Kilmarnock are 1-0 to the good. Boys 101st goal for the Rugby Park Club. Kiernan. Nice little flick by Tavernier. Linking there with Garner. It's Tavernier. Now James Tavernier. Always adventurous coming forward. He just couldn't provide the finish. Kiernan. Looking towards Garner. He's turned well away from Boyle. And from Miller. Garner again. He's gone to grounds. No penalty, says Kevin Clancy. Well, it looks as though Garner made the most of that one. Tavernier, away by Smith. There's a challenge there from Hawkshaw, sliding in on Mackay. He claims he got the ball. This is James Tavernier's range. What a strike that is from the Rangers' fullback. His second goal of the season. Jamie McDonald tried to get across. He got a hand to it, but he couldn't keep it out. An outstanding effort from Tavernier. And Rangers are back in level terms. Charging forward is Frizzell. Who has a lunging challenge from Greg Taylor. And it's a red card. 
It was a wild tackle from the Kilmarnock teenager on Joey Barton. He caught him with the studs on the shin. Very dangerous. Or will it be Halliday with the free kick or Tavernier? It's Tavernier again. An outstanding save by Jamie McDonald up to the task this time. Mackay trying to get beyond Henry still Mackay and touched away by Jamie McDonald fine goalkeeping again by the Coman at number one I thought we were excellent uh, and when you go down to 10 men against a team like Rangers who pass it and rotate around the pitch the way they do with the quality they have for us to stay in the game I mean we've only been pegged back by a world class free kick so I thought, well, well, real value for our lead at half time. And I just thought the performance was very, very good. So, a good point for Kilmarnock. Terrible tackle on Joey Barton. And questions still remain over this Rangers side, it's fair to say. New additions, Stephen, into the squad. But are Rangers this season better than they were last season? I think they've got better players. I think they've got more options. But for me, the chemistry is wrong. The balance of last year's team was better, and I think last year's team was actually a better team than this team that's playing right now. So, Michael, does that mean that there's a question mark over their recruitment? Well, I mean, you could say that, but I think that, you know, Tom was right in what he says. There has been better players that have been, you know, acquired. It's just that mixture and that balance in the side hasn't been sought yet. So only time will tell, really, whether uh, the recruitment has been a success or not. Do you think, you know, they've spent £1.75 million on, on, on Joe Gardner? up front, an area where I think they're reasonably strong, would they not have been better spending that money on a young centre-half yeah. with a bit of pace? Well, they could, um, yeah. Or, I mean, well, to be honest, you look at the fact that when Mark Warburton went into the club, he was very quick to get rid of uh, Darren McGregor, yeah. who was a fast, you know, athletic defender, who could, you know, help out in these situations. I mean, this year, this is something I spoke about last year with Aberdeen and St Johnston, full-backs going and attacking the ball. The centre-half's got to go and deal with that, and Tavernier drops off, and then the problem's eliminated. This is how it should be, Mikey. This is a setup how it should be with um, Rob Keenan there. But Rob Keenan gets dragged out to the ball. Tavernier then can't recover into an, a an area to affect Chris Boyd. He's in no-man's land, and Chris Boyd really should have scored. You can see Clint Hill's furious um, that, that Rob Keenan's going out of position. And this one, Greg Kelty here, runs past Joey Barton as if he's not there, he can't recover, but then it's all about Chris Boyd. The timing of this run is just absolute textbook, uh, finishing for his 250th goal, but the biggest concern for me there is Chris Boyd's running away from your centre-halves. <laughs> and that goal, you could just imagine, you know, that front four from Celtic, Kilty picking the ball up and driving past the midfield, could easily be a Rogic, a Forrest or a Sinclair, and then Lee Griffiths, that's what he lives off. He lives yeah, off that, that space in behind on the last defender. So these are the things that uh, Rangers are going to have to you know, combat and make sure they limit those opportunities for Celtic. Well, that is the big question now. Obviously, the match with Celtic, a week on Saturday. Can this Rangers defence scope? And a lot of talk about Philip Senderos as well. Is he the answer? Well, I'm not convinced if he is. Not in terms of pace, I don't think. No, I don't think so. I think a lot of it is down to structure as well. You looked at those things there, they're all little small individual things that if they get nailed down in training, that would help. But I'm not sure that that's a part of the game that is of most importance to, to Rangers. How do you see the match with Celtic going? I mean, obviously we've got the international break, but all eyes will very swiftly turn to that game. <coughs> I'm unconvinced by Rangers this season. In fits and starts, they've played well, but not in long periods in games. And they've not really dominated a game yet for me. Celtic have dominated every game they've played and look so convincing uh, and especially going forward in forward areas and you'd have to say Rangers don't look that great defensively so it, for me it tees up towards a Celtic victory. We have to give credit to Kilmarnock as well for large parts of the match yep. they controlled it they really dominated Rangers for the first 45 a 45 that Mark Warburton referred to as possibly the worst Rangers performance in his reign. Yeah so I think you've, you know quite clearly you've got to attribute that down to the fact that Kilmarnock's uh, level of performance was, was top drawer and you know full credit to them but for them they've got to carry that on into other games because their season is going to be defined not by the games against Rangers but by the games that they're going to compete against teams in, the, in around them at the bottom of the table. Okay, it have been three straight defeats for Motherwell as they prepared for the...